Why don't I make a full live 2D tutorial from start to finish? That will be a great idea! <laughs> eh. Okay, true that I really was using the toilet when I came up with this idea. To be honest, I just really want a tutorial about the basic of Live 2D. My ass was tired from searching the web and reading the behemoth of a tutorial that Live 2D have. And I thought, man, is there like a complete tutorial somewhere? So I made one. Making one? Okay, look, when I post the first part, I'm probably still making the fourth part or something. Because to be honest, making a VTube avatar and rigging it in Live 2D takes MONTHS. And considering that I don't actually have a ready to rig model in my disposal, I've also decided to show you guys on how to draw one. So yeah, I'm probably not yet finished if ever I post this. And okay, I know a lot of YouTubers already made a tutorial how to draw a Live 2D model, but I don't have any originality and I already gave an effort of recording myself. So if you're broke, can draw shit for a living, and want to learn how to make one of those fancy 2D VTube characters, hi, welcome. Just a disclaimer, am I a professional rigger? No, no I am not. But I just want to share to you guys what I've learned through the months of studying Live 2D. Am I a professional artist? Also no, I just like to draw. A lot. Okay, so um, that's that. Let's get on with the show. First things first, I start off by drawing a sketch. I use Clip Studio when making a model since it has a symmetry tool and my god is that a lifesaver. Some artists, a minority of it, actually draw different kind of poses in drawing the avatar as long as the face is symmetrical. I actually planned on doing just that but I was too lazy to do so and I was more excited on doing the rigging part. My lazy ass just wanted to finish drawing early. While doing the rough and detailed sketch, you should start considering on how you cut the parts, which is actually important. Like really important. Okay, some artists draw first then cut, but I'm more of a draw each part kind of person really. I don't know which one's harder since I haven't tried drawing than cutting, but that's for you to decide if you ever tried doing both. It's actually a good idea on making a character design first before jumping straight on making the avatar. Why? Because it's a major pain in the ass when you're winging everything on what the avatar looked like while drawing. Take me for an example. I was actually sweating my ass to January while I was drawing this because I'm recording my work and I felt like hundreds of eyes are watching me when there's literally none. It just felt different when you're recording, you know? After doing the sketch, next comes the line art. While doing the line art, I was already drawing each part on different layers. You will see on the side that I add divide on the folder slash layer to remind myself that I have to split the right from the left after I finish coloring and merging. Take note that left and right are different in Live 2D. It's not programmed as a mirror type so basically the left is the right and the right is the left. If you're the type of person who still couldn't get hang with the left and right, like me, then just use the greater than and less than symbols rather than type the whole word itself. While I was drawing the parts, I was already thinking about what part will be on top. If I move the head to the side, what part of the bangs will be hidden? What hair will show up first? What part of the clothes will be at the back? To distinguish this, I usually number my layers with one up top. Example, bangs one is the one up front because when the head turned out sideways, it will cover bangs two, bangs three, and so forth. I always ended up using it mainly on the parts and the shades of the hair because they always have their, well, they have the most parts. Just a tip, if you want flowy hairs, then add more parts. Some of the mistakes I saw when drawing a video model, there are a lot of parts for the front part but one huge block of hair at the back. Don't do that, please. This character I'm actually drawing have 28 hair parts. <laughs> Kill me now. Another thing, see this part? Duplicate it, both sides. Or if you're not lazy, you could redraw it, kudos to you, or whatever. You wouldn't see me duplicating it here in Clip Studio, I did that in Live 2D while I was rigging the hair. Why I do this is because so that when the head turned, it will look more three-dimensional. But this is just an option. It's not really a major part, it's just, you know, another detail to cry on. 
when you draw the head, like the the whole face thing, Shanners, don't merge the line art. I will show you in a different video why, or just look up other professional riggers because I just got it from them and it actually looks neat when the head starts moving. Once you're done with the line art, you can now start doing the base color. Actually, you could have just placed the base color while doing the line art. Don't copy what I just did, my way takes longer. Important reminder, do not merge the line art and the base color just yet. I know the numbers of layers are freaking crazy right now, but that's just how it is. This is why it's very important to name your layers, so that you don't end up playing hide and seek with them. The most crucial part for me when it comes to coloring is the eyes. It has so many parts that I actually feel just drawing my damn laptop away from me and start questioning myself, why did I even do this? I'm not even gonna make a couple of the ching with the amount of effort I'm putting on a character that I won't ever use. And I'm not even gonna sell her because I, when I rigged her, it's not even my best one. I'll just feel bad for the avatar. But I digress, where was I? Oh right, um, parts of the avatar. Color? Whatever. Pro tip, you should start drawing guides for the mount. So when it comes to rigging it in live 2D, it will be a lot more easier. Now there are three major parts for me. The head, the upper, and the lower. Wow, such creativity. The head actually consists of more than 50% of the layers I have because there's a lot of movement going on there. So basically, the lower you get, the more stiff it became. Become. Whatever. Now we have the front banks that consist of 5 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. It could be more, it could be less, it actually depends on the character design. We also have side hair left 1, side hair left 2, Side hair right one and side hair right two. Crazy, right? The face, which only have the main color, the line art, and this type of shape. It's shaped like a V this way so that it will be easier to manipulate in Live 2D. Other than the V shaped shadow for the chin, you must also have the same amount of shadow for the bangs. So if you have five parts for the bangs, you must also have five parts for its shadow. Also, you need to make one blob, one circle that has the same same color of the chin shadow. Why you do this, it's gonna be very useful on rigging, I can't explain it now, but clip it on the outline of the face. Now the eyes have eyebrows, eye shade, upper lash, upper lash highlight which is optional, side lash, lower lash slash eyelid, I like merging those two so that it will be easier to rig. Upper eyelid, shine, highlight area for the pupil but also optional, and carnea. Now the mouth also have a lot of parts. There's the upper lip, lower lip, upper and lower lip color. Usually the outline of the lip and the main color are in different layers but I prefer merging them and just put the lip color on multiply. Upper teeth, lower teeth, tongue, shade, and inner. We also have right and left ears, but so um, but that's just solid ears. There's no parts in it unless you have earrings. And of course, the back hair. It's not really part of the head. I'll tell you why later. But I just want to show you guys on how many parts it has. How I color the hair is, oh well, uh, how do I say this? Um, I color the lazy way. Now I have this folder named front banks that have 10 layers that consist of the whole banks on the front, both line art and base color. If merged, it's just 5 layers. 
now I make a new layer above the folder, clipped it and set it either on multiply or add. I use this because the color accuracy of my laptop screen isn't well trustworthy so I use add to know the hair color of the lighter part and multiply to know the color of the darker part. After doing this, I merge those layers and make a rough idea on how the color would look like. Eyedropper tool is my best friend here. It will overlap with the line art and make it look bloopy but trust me on this. After making a rough color, I copy the layer and paste it on every base color of the front banks before I delete the main layer. And then I will draw finer details each to make it more, you know, pleasing. If you get all that, then good for you. If not, then um, I don't know, just call her how you do it. And um, as you can see, I also did this with the back hair along with the blue tone. See what I'm doing here? I'm drawing the top part of her head. It's not going to be visible now, but it will later once the avatar will start looking down. So instead of having an empty space over here, there would be the, uh, well, uh, what do you call this? Parted hair or something? Yeah. Okay, so now with the head part done, next is the upper. How you do this depends on what the design of the character's clothes are, so the way I do it can be very different, but I'll show you guys anyway. The neck part have collar, the whole neck, and shoulder. For the hoodie, I have lace left. I have no freaking idea why I named it lace. I'm probably just low on caffeine that night. Lace right, hood, bust, Pocket, waist, garter, shoulder hoodie left, I could have just named it sleeves. Why? And shoulder hoodie right. For the accessories, I have line 1, 2, and 3, circle 1 and 2, and pin. For the arms, I have hand, arm, forearm, ribbon. Now I have a folder there that has fingers and the folder consists of 5 different folders that are named on each fingers. Within those folders have the amount of knuckles each fingers have. Again, this is optional. I was just trying to be extra. And well, now I'm regretting it. I also have a folder here named back. Why? Well, this is where I put the back of the hoodie. This one. And also the back of the hair. Yes. This is where I place the hair, not at the head. I did this so that the back hair won't be overlapping with the clothes. You always have to make sure of the placing of your layers, or else rigging it will be harder. Not, it, not that it's impossible, it's just a tad bit more, well, more of a hassle because other than the type of layers, Live 2D also have its own version of layers that involves numbers. We'll get to that on a different video. Now that the upper is done, we'll head on with the lower. Okay, the lower have the most least parts. Honestly, it just became this many than usual is because I added unnecessary accessories here. Anyway, there's the left and the right leg that have thigh, calf, and feet. That's all. 
I didn't want to put more parts in the shoe since it's rarely being shown, which is actually fact. Now, the accessory. I don't think it's necessary for me to say it since I'm not going to put much movement to it. I just divided the parts because, well, I just did. Once the color is done and all, you can now merge the base color and the line art, but not the face. Be careful of the face. Be sure not to make any layer on multiply or add because Live 2D won't boot it up. It has its own layering effects there, so don't be scared. After doing all that, save it as PSD and now you're good to go. You can now start rigging. Well, that's it for this part. I hope you learned something. If none, then... Well, I tried, okay? It's my first time teaching.